So um, I'm going to just, my name is Art Worrell. I, I'm Dean of Students at North Stars High School in Newark. And myself and my peers just wanted to share a few thoughts about some of the themes this weekend. Build landmarks. It's been the theme of this weekend, to build lasting landmarks. We do it every day in our interactions with teachers, students, and families. We are building powerful landmarks in the underserved communities of Boston, Rochester, Troy, Brooklyn, and Newark. Communities where dreams have been deferred for too long due to low expectations, inefficient bureaucracy, and racism. When I think about building powerful landmarks in the communities that we serve, I can't help but to think about the road I travel every morning and every evening on my way to and from work in North, at Northstar. You see, due to the tireless work of so many people, some of which are in this room right now, uh, we're currently erecting a new state-of-the-art high school building in the heart of downtown Newark. The building will be ready for our students in the fall of 2011. It's what our students need, but more importantly, it's what our students deserve. Every morning, I pass the construction site where the foundations of this structure are being laid. Mike Mann and I once observed that it really just seems like the construction workers are, build, are moving one pile of dirt from one spot to another <laughs> while chain smoking. But I've been, uh, I've been assured that everything is right on schedule. In any event, as I look at the location of what will be a new landmark in the city of Newark, I can't help but to think about the irony of this scene. Between the boarded up factories and the mammoth prudential offices will stand a monument of academic achievement, while just a few blocks away lay the ruins of the James Street housing project. These housing projects serve as a different type of landmark in Newark. This housing development, like most in America, was built in the 1950s uh, to provide affordable housing for middle class and low income communities. Instead, due to a lack of maintenance, poor public policy, Many housing projects like this one became a center of poverty, drug abuse, and violence. Many of my students at North Star at some point in their lives lived in this very housing project. These projects have been mostly boarded up and abandoned now. They serve now as a reminder of the legacy of social injustice, segregation, and poverty that Newark is still fighting to overcome. This dichotomy is symbolic of what our schools mean to the communities that we serve. The burial of poverty, despair, and the resurrection of knowledge, hope, opportunity are real in Newark, in Brooklyn, in Troy, in Rochester, and in Boston. It's real wherever individuals trust that high expectations, hard work, and personal character are the keys that open the doors to opportunity and success. Our schools and our students represent that dream deferred that so many families had when they migrated to cities like Newark. So whether it's a new multi-million dollar building or a shared space in the bottom floor of an old district school building, the foundations of these new landmarks of academic success are the same. They were not laid with bricks and mortar. Instead, these foundations were laid every time you correct a student's posture in class or demand that 100% of your students have their hands in the air and not settling for 90. Every time you give difficult feedback to a teacher about a lesson plan or a class, Every time you sit down with a family and promise them that if they commit to your school and the expectations that you set for their child, that child will be successful, they will go to college. It is my hope that with the landmarks of success that we build, we will continue to realize those dreams deferred in the communities that we serve. So uh, I'd like to close with a very brief story about um, a young man from the Bronx, New York. For those of you that don't know, the Bronx and its history is not all that different from the communities that we all serve. The young man was fortunate enough to have two parents in his home, unlike most of his friends. He was a decent student throughout his middle school career, but by the time he had reached high school, he had become increasingly distracted by, and, uh, and increasingly distracted and just not that interested in school. Teachers with low expectations and a history of poor work habits had conspired to ruin his high school career. By his senior year, his girlfriend was pregnant, and his future most certainly college was in doubt. According to the New York City Department of Education, in 2001, the graduation rate for black males in New York was below 32%. At that point in his life, he was well on his way to becoming another statistic in the tragic tale of urban education. For many young men in this situation, graduating from high school just doesn't seem worth the trouble, let alone taking the road to college. 
With the choices he had made, some would have justified a decision to drop out of school and do whatever he could to provide for his family. Luckily, I didn't make that decision. I was going to end up like most of the young men I called my friends growing up on Eli Ave in the Bronx. They were talented, they were intelligent, and they were charismatic. Yet they never realized their true potential and were stuck in a cycle of poverty. Luckily, I had something that separated me from a lot of my friends. It wasn't intellect, my wife will attest to that, or even work ethic. It was a landmark. It was a landmark that I used when I was lost in a sea of negativity and low expectations that consumed many of the people in my community. This landmark refocused me and helped me to stay the course. My landmark was my older sister, Shana. She was a person that had already seen success and reminded me at every turn that I could too. She had graduated college, she was a professional, and she was already giving back to her community. Excuses, no matter how real, simply were not good enough for her. Expectations were always high. Perhaps without even knowing it, she had planted a desire and a will to attend college and to finish it deep within my heart. For that, I'll always be thankful to her. My sister Shana, one of the founding teachers at North Star, was and continues to be a landmark in my life. I often think about those friends that never had that landmark. What would their lives have been? What opportunities would they have opened for themselves and for others? Never doubt the fact that you continually build landmarks like my sister every day. These are not landmarks made of bricks and concrete. Instead, they are landmarks of flesh and blood, integrity and wisdom. You build landmarks in the teachers that you guide and mentor so that they may serve as a landmark in the lives of students who simply may not have another model to follow. You build landmarks in the students you prepare for college who may someday return to the communities and say, I did it, and so can you. And finally, the amazing schools that you've all built serve as a landmark for the families and larger communities that we serve. And it helps to redefine what it means to grow up and raise a family in Boston, Rochester, Troy, Newark, or Brooklyn. Families that should not have to rely or pray for their child's name to be randomly selected in a lottery but instead deserve the right to give their child a quality education. This is truly an exciting time to be doing the work that we're doing together. I'm honored and humbled to be sharing this work with all the people in this room. The eyes of the world are upon us. Continue to be extraordinary, continue to change history, and continue to build landmarks. Thank you.